guys, I'm Maxell, and for video one of Woman in Your Body, I would like to focus on the gendered body, and I want to talk a little bit about what that means and how society is influenced by um, this gendered body. So as a society, we have a lot of expectations for um, many individuals in, in our community and in our society. And all of these expectations are pretty much derived from the culture that we raised in, um, the traditional views and the religious views that we have, and really how we're raised. Um, and all of these expectations are a form of this idea that we have and we expect um, individuals to be and to become what their biological body says. So if um, their genitalia is to be a male or to be a female, they have to um, really commit to all of those things that uh, society says they need to conform to. Um, and really this begins in the womb. For example, we have baby showers for um, mothers that are expecting and if the baby is a boy we give gifts that are blue and we give uh, cars or trains and if the baby is a girl we give toys that are dolls and um, maybe princesses and even in a baby shower we have this certain theme that we have to follow um, if it's a boy, it's usually blue, and if it's a girl, it's usually pink, or it's um, a certain theme that follows onto uh, the gender of this baby. Not only that, but also in gender reveal parties, we also have individuals that might um, announce that they're having a boy, and they throw blue balloons in the air or they're having a girl and they, um, you know, use that by doing some sort of pink balloon or pink um, assortment that they are giving out for people to know that that's what the baby's gender is supposed to be. We also see that um, when an expecting mother and father uh, decorate their nursery. Um, if it's a boy, maybe they're going to decorate it jungle theme or uh, trains and cars. And if it's a girl, it's going to be more princess themed and it's going to be, um, you know, pink and purple and that, that girl color and that girl idea that, um, you know, people perceive to be normal. Um, not only that, but as this child is born... And they become um, more adjusted to this school system and they start going to school. Um, Karen Martin mentions in the article, Becoming a Gendered Body, the Practices of Preschool. She mentions that gendering of the body in childhood is the foundation on which further gendering of the body occurs throughout the life course. So the way that society sees a boy or a girl is really how they are supposed to be in their lifetime. So during preschool or during this childhood years, in school they really have a hidden curriculum of um, teaching the child that they are a boy and that they are a girl. For example, some teachers may say um, young ladies or young gentlemen, and instead of gender neutralizing that the idea of them being a boy or a girl, they really um, focus on mentioning that they are a lady or a gentleman. And we have um, other words that some preschools or some teachers may mention, like, you know, you're a handsome boy, or you are a beautiful girl, or you're a princess, or, you know, different words 
and different um, agendas that some teachers may follow that, um, you know, really focus and really hit on to this point that society really genders the body. Um, we also know that um, the body is really, really viewed as whether it should be masculine or feminine. And um, in the article, The Socially Constructed Body, by Judith Lorber and Patricia Yancey Martin, we see that um, they mention that members of society construct their bodies in ways that comply with accepted views of masculinity and femininity. So throughout life, men are expected to be a certain way and women are supposed to be a certain way. And these men are supposed to be bulky, they're supposed to be muscular, they're supposed to be strong, um, they have to be the head of the household and have, you know, this, this power and this idea that um, they are a handyman, that they can fix anything, that they know how to change a tire, that they have to dress in a certain way to make sure that they are seen as that masculine, um, manly way that society wants them to be. Um, while on the other hand, women are supposed to be more fragile, they're supposed to be more vulnerable, um, and some people in society may think that women shouldn't be as muscular as men because it defiles their body or it's not common for them to have that, um, that masculine aspect in their life or it's not what a woman should look like versus a woman should have long hair and she should be wearing makeup and she should, um, you know, have breast implants or breast lifts, um, and that's a lot, like, a lot of things like that really lead into this um, cosmetic surgery. In 2002, 6.9 million Americans had cosmetic surgery. 88% of them were women and 12% of them were men. So we see how society plays a huge part in the way that people feel about themselves and the way that people perceive themselves to be and how they should act to be accepted and how they should act to be, um, you know, comfortable with themselves. And many times in, in society and um, in just the world that we live in today, we see that individuals have to you know, submit to the views of society in order to be accepted or in order to be um, seen normal. And that's really what the gendered body consists of. And that's really what it means that, you know, even from before birth all the way to adulthood, there is this idea of society um you know, pressing on to what this person needs to be like, what a man needs to be like, and what a woman needs to be like based on the genitalia that they have. And it's, you know, really hard sometimes for people to um, do that because sometimes they're either lost in their bodies, like we mentioned in the article where um, an individual doesn't is, isn't comfortable with their own body and they don't conform to either being a man or a woman. So that is not seen as normal in society. And as we see more and more and more, those individuals are coming out and they're not categorizing themselves into that certain um, label of a man or a woman. And that has been a great change in society and the way that um, people view 
gender and the way that they view the gendered body. And this has caused an uprising in gender neutralization. So many individuals, instead of um, causing or pressing onto the idea that they have to be a woman or a man, they are letting children decide for themselves if they want to be a woman or a man when they grow up. And that's a little bit about what I wanted to discuss on and how society has a huge part on the idea of the gendered body. Thank you so much for watching.